We're going to reflect on a story. A story told to us by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which came in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an and Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us this story about Juraj who was an abid. He was a worshipper from the Bani Israel. And he decided to build a temple and to isolate himself, to seclude himself outside of the city just to focus on ibadah, just to focus on worship. And he had been doing this for a long time. One day, his mother came and the temple was high up and she started to call him. Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. And he was in his salat, he was praying. So he said, Ya Rabbi, my mother or my salat, what should I do? So he decided to continue praying and not to answer his, and not to answer his mother. When he finished, he didn't go to see what she wanted either. He continued to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7. That's what he did every day, all day. And then, the next day she came. And she called him, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. He said, Ummi o salati, my mother or my prayer, what should I do? He decided to continue praying and not to answer the call of his mother. She came back the third day and she called him, Ya Juraj, Ya Juraj. And he said the same thing to himself, Ummi o salati, my mother or my prayer. And he chose to continue his prayer. So here she did what is very difficult for a parent to do. She made dua upon her own son. She said, Allahumma la tumittu. Oh Allah, don't let him die until he sees the faces of the prostitutes. There will be a fitna for him in his life because he didn't answer his mother. Time went on and Juraj continued doing what he was doing. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Night and day. Totally devoted to the ibadah, to the worship of Allah. One day the people of Bani Israel were gathered in one of their sittings. And they were talking about how Juraj solely focused on the ibadah. What an amazing guy. As they were saying this, there was a prostitute there with them. And she was a famous prostitute. Somebody who was known for her beauty. Somebody who nobody could say no to. A big fitna. She said, if you want, I'll distract him from his worship. I'll do it. Obviously, she's going to get paid. It's like a bet now. So, okay, if you can do it, we'll pay you this much. So she goes to him. Nobody can say no to this lady. She comes to him. He doesn't even pay attention to her. Like she's not even there. She keeps trying and trying and trying. And he's not paying attention to her. He rejects it. Focus on his ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, she became very upset and decided to make a trap for Juraj for the future. She found a shepherd who was out with his goats or his sheep and she went to him and offered herself to him. Now he couldn't say no, he didn't have the same level of iman until she became pregnant. After nine months she delivered the baby, whose baby is this? She said it's the baby of Juraj, the Abid. They said, Juraj, the one that all of us are praising, the one that the great worshiper, the great pious man amongst us, and he's fooling us, he's tricking us. The people became enraged. They didn't go to Juraj to see his side of the story. They immediately went to him. He's like, Yo, what's going on? What's wrong? What happened? Because everybody respected him. Everybody cared for him. What's wrong with you guys? And they said, Zenate, you committed fornication, and the prostitute got pregnant from you. And you're, 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 you're showing us that you're pious and you're this worshiper. So he said, just wait. He said, where's the boy? He said, that's the boy right there. He said, let me go and pray and come back. He goes right to the salat and he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes back and he pokes the boy in the stomach. And he says, yeah, gulam, oh boy, who's your father? And he says, the shepherd is my father. The boy spoke at that age to show the truthfulness of Juraj. Immediately the people, because they had, they, had, uh, they had tore down his temple. They came to him, they started to hug him and kiss him and touch him and ask him to forgive them. And they said, we want to build your temple back from gold out of respect for you. He said, no, build it back from mud just like it was. 
My dear brothers and sisters, what do we gain from this story? What does this story teach us? First of all, we see the status of parents in Islam and the right of our parents are upon us. In Islam, what is the most important thing? Is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah as one without joining any partners with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, and your Lord has decreed that you only worship Him. Immediately after that, to be dutiful to your parents. To be good to your parents. Also this story teaches us the power of the dua of the parents. And pay attention to this. Because if you're a parent, no matter how bad your children might get, no matter how far away they might go, how disobedient they might be, always remember the power of dua. And a lot of times when the children really go astray, it's because of the way you raised them. But remember the power of dua. He didn't fulfill her right. She became angry. She made dua upon him. So it's important for us as parents to remember, always make dua for your children, never on your children. Because the power of the parent, the dua of the parent is, is strong, it's powerful. And then also to the children, to the youngsters who are here with us today, remember the power of the dua of your parents when you are disobedient and you don't fulfill what you're supposed to fill as a son, as a daughter. If you get them to where they're so upset, they make dua upon you, you're in big trouble. Also in this story, there's a fiqh issue that we need to reflect on. And what is the ruling? If your parents call you when you are praying, first of all, it's either a fard prayer, that which is compulsory, the five daily prayers, or it's the sunnah prayers. If it's fard, you do not leave the salat. But what you do in this situation is the takhfif. You shorten the prayer. You lighten the prayer. Also, and this is confirmed in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abu Qatada radiallahu an. When the story, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard the baby crying and he would shorten the prayer so the woman wouldn't be distracted. So it wouldn't be difficult to her while she was praying. Look at the rahmah, the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his ummah. If it is the sunnah or the nafil prayer, what do you do? First of all, you need to know if your parents will become angry if you don't answer or they won't become angry. Or if they're in dire need of you or it's not really that important. Everybody knows their parents when they call them if they, what they usually need. If you know they're not going to become angry, then you finish the prayer. You shorten it, but you finish it, then you immediately go to your parents. But if you know they're in need and they're going to become angry if you don't answer, then this you break the prayer and you go and see what your parents, what they need, you serve them, and then you come back to the prayer. When you come back to the prayer, you start from where? You start from the beginning, from Allahu Akbar, from the beginning, and start your prayer all over. This is the sunnah to do, inshallah ta'ala, if your parents call you when you're praying. Also, from the things that we benefit from this story, is how to deal with, or the reality of the evil people, and how they want to destruct and corrupt upon earth. He's not doing anything, he's not harming anybody, he's in his temple outside of the city worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here, look at the people of evil, and the people agreed to pay her, to support her, to distract him. And this is how the people of sharr, the people of evil, always do. They come to the salihin, to the pious people, to al multazimin to the ones who are practicing their deen. They want to distract them for them to leave the, leave the deen, to enter into kufr, or they want you to fall into sin. Also, what we gain and we benefit from this hadith, the importance to confirm when any news comes to you. Oh, you will believe if somebody comes to you with some news, some information, he tells you, yo, this brother says this, this brother does that. But to bayinu, investigate, make sure, to confirm what's been said. If we start to implement this ayah, everything will change for us when it comes to the ones who spread the rumors and the ones who spread the fitna. If the people came to Jurajit and asked him, it wouldn't have been these problems. Also from the things that we gain from this story is how the pious deal with calamities. Here's somebody devoted 24-7 to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of a sudden he's got people ripping down his temple. What did he do? 
He knows the only way out is through what? Through who? Through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was calm. He was cool. He returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that at a time of difficulty, the time of challenges, he would race to the prayer alayhi salatu wa salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, whoever fears Allah, Allah will find for him a way out. Then we can go to the people for assistance. But first we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this story reminds us that alhamdulillah, in the end, that the good ending will always be for the true believers, the one who established the taqwa in their lives. Barakallahu li ulakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa naf'ani wa yaakum bima fihi ma min ayati wal hikmah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li ulakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim.